Hello, I'm Jeanette Washington, and I want to welcome you to the Color of Autism's Parent Training video. Here, we're connecting parents to culturally competent support. Our goal is for you to understand the appropriate goals for your child's early developmental needs and for you to utilize specific teaching methods to meet the needs of your child with developmental disabilities. This video was made possible by a grant from the W.K. Kellogg Foundation. As we address early development, we will focus on a specific language-based learning disorder called dyslexia. Dyslexia is popularly used to mean a disability in processing language. It's the most common learning disorder that exists. Among children in U.S. public schools, 3 in 20 receive special education for reading problems. 3 to 5% of those kids most likely have dyslexia. There are biological markers that point to dyslexia. Dyslexia runs in some families, and it is a genetic factor that more than a third of people diagnosed with dyslexia have a relative, often a father or an uncle, who is dyslexic. Dyslexia makes it hard to recognize and use the sounds in language. So your child might reverse letters like reading pot as top, or they might have trouble sounding out new words and recognizing ones they know. Having dyslexia does not mean your child isn't smart. With the right support, your dyslexic child can learn to read and do very well in school and ultimately in life. Next, we'll look at some precursors and indicators of dyslexia, and we'll also talk about steps to take once you suspect dyslexia. Dyslexia often shows signs before your child starts school. They often have trouble learning even simple rhymes. Your child might talk later than most children. They may struggle to follow directions or learn left and right. Once your child starts school, they may struggle with reading, writing, and spelling. Indicators of dyslexia can be difficult to recognize before your child enters school, but some early cues and clues may indicate dyslexia. Once your child reaches school age, your child's teacher may be the first to notice that there is a difference. Severity may vary, but the condition often becomes apparent as your child starts learning to read. Here are some before school or preschool indicators. Signs that a young child may be at risk of dyslexia includes late talking, learning new words slowly, problems with forming words correctly, such as reversing sounds in words or confusing words that sound alike, problems remembering or naming letters, numbers, and colors, and difficulty learning nursery rhymes or playing rhyming games. School age indicators, once your child is actually in school, the signs and symptoms may become more apparent, including reading well below the expected level for age, problems processing and understanding what he or she hears, difficulty finding the right word or forming answers to questions, problems remembering the sequence of things, difficulty seeing and occasionally hearing similarities and differences in letters and words, the inability to sound out the pronunciation of an unfamiliar word, difficulties with spelling, difficulties with copying from a board, spending an unusually long time completing tasks that involve reading or writing, avoiding activities that involve reading, and overall, a strong dislike for reading aloud or reading in general. If you suspect dyslexia before school or during school age, we'll discuss what you can do to make sure your child is successful. 
Always remember that your suspicions and your intuitions are very valid. These concerns you have should be brought to your child's pediatrician. Your child's pediatrician will probably first give your child a physical examination to rule out troubles with hearing or vision and other sources of developmental delay. Then the pediatrician may refer you to a child psychologist, a speech language pathologist, or a reading specialist for an evaluation of your child's intelligence and ability to process language. If your child's pediatrician finds no signs of a learning problem, yet you still feel anxious, trust your guts. Go to a child or school psychologist for an evaluation anyway. If it turns out you're wrong, you can relax. If you correctly sense the problem, your child can benefit greatly from the early diagnosis. With special teaching techniques, your child can start elementary school on the right track and with the right kinds of guidance from you. It's important to note that even if your child hasn't begun formal schooling yet, under federal law, your child may be eligible for an evaluation by a psychologist at your local elementary school. So you definitely want to contact your school district for more information. If your child is already in school, then you should meet with your child's teacher regularly to discuss how your child is doing and strategies you've implemented at home and also discuss some helpful strategies that your child's teacher can implement in school. Ultimately, you want to know what's been successful on either side of the spectrum. Here are two strategies to ask your child's teacher to implement in their classroom. First things first, we want to honor that our child's teacher likely has about 20 other students in his or her class. So we want to be mindful of how we communicate with our child's teacher. We want to communicate effectively, but we also want to make sure that we take into account the time management that may need to be in place for our strategies that we are gonna be suggesting. Our first strategy is multi-sensory learning. Multi-sensory activities help dyslexic children and all children absorb and process information in a retainable manner and involve using your senses like touch and sight. Again, multi-sensory learning isn't just beneficial for dyslexic learners, but it's also beneficial for the rest of the class. Engaging in something different and hands-on excites students and heightens their ability to learn and retain the information at hand. Some examples of multi-sensory activities in the classroom can include writing words and sentences with tactile materials like glitter glue, sand, pasta, salt, Legos, or beads, physical activities to practice spelling like hopscotch, jump rope, as the children spell out words when they jump to each square or over the rope. Students can work in pairs and take turns to dictate words and spell them. And we also have scavenger hunts for letters and words where students can split into teams and the teacher can provide them with a word and they'll write the letters onto notes and hide them around the classroom. The teens must find the letters to construct the assigned word and then glue them together on a poster by cutting out the letters. Who doesn't love game-based learning? Next, we wanna look at accommodations. First, we can use the closed procedure this is an opportunity for the teacher to provide the dyslexic student with a sheet containing key information that will be covered throughout the lesson and blank out key words. You can also use an outline. This way the student will have a great map and a navigator as they are moving along through the lessons. The student can then take notes, just like others, without the stress of trying to copy everything before it is wiped off the board. This also helps 
with providing the dyslexic learner with focus and commit key information to memory. Next, your child's teacher is gonna wanna look at giving your child plenty of time to complete their homework. If a piece of homework takes a day to complete, then that child may need the whole weekend to work on it. The teacher can also communicate with you about the homework schedule, giving you a whole month in advance to prepare your child to start looking at certain topics at home and in advance. Finally, your child's teacher should mark their grades based on effort and ideas. Dyslexic learners may be less skilled than their peers at spelling and grammar. However, if their thought process and creativity shine through the errors and it's clear they've made a conscious effort, this should be praised. Highlighting major spelling errors using a red pen and saying wrong won't motivate your child or any child for that matter. So now we've talked a bit about dyslexia. We've talked about the genetic marker of dyslexia. We talked about how a dyslexia diagnosis can come about. And finally, we talked about some ways in which teachers can be more supportive to dyslexic students. So with this all in mind, it is time for us to take a quick quiz. So grab a pen, grab a piece of paper, and we'll get started with our quiz on dyslexia. The first question is, how common is dyslexia? Again, that question is, how common is dyslexia? If you answered by saying it's the most common learning disorder that exists, then you are correct. Among children in U.S. public schools, 3 in 20 receive special education for reading problems. 3 to 5% of those kids most likely have dyslexia. It is the most common learning disorder. The next question is, if you suspect dyslexia, what should you do? Again, if you suspect dyslexia, what should you do? If you answered by saying visiting your child's pediatrician, then that is correct. Your child's pediatrician may refer you to a child psychologist, a speech pathologist, or a reading specialist for an evaluation of your child's intelligence and ability to process language. Also, under federal law, your child may be eligible for an evaluation by a psychologist at your local elementary school. Question number three, what strategy could you work with your child's teacher to implement? Again, that question is, what strategy could you work with your child's teacher to implement? If you answered that by saying multi-sensory learning and accommodations, then your answer is correct. Multi-sensory learning activities help dyslexic children absorb and process information in a retainable manner and involve using senses like touch, sight, and hear. Accommodations like more time and using an outline help level the playing field for your child. I hope you were able to learn about how dyslexia can impact speech and language for your child's early development and understand the specific teaching methods to meet the needs of your child with developmental disabilities. Thank you for viewing the Color of Autism's parent training video.